Have you ever wondered why it's so hard to speak with a Jehovah's Witness and make them realize the truth about this false religion? Well, we're going to find out why that is right now. In our first songbook, the song was called All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, which was about, well, the power of Jesus' name, with zero mention of Jehovah. Now here's the same song in 1950. Instead of the lyrics overemphasizing Jesus' name, the lyrics refer to making known God's will and mentions Jehovah by name. Why all the changes? because our songs reflect our current understanding of scriptural truth. As the light gets brighter, we understand the truth more clearly, so the songs change. Why all the changes? Because our songs reflect our current understanding of scriptural truth. As the light gets brighter, we understand the truth more clearly, so the songs change. Wow, that was some interesting mumbo jumbo there. The way they put those words together, they're being tricky. So let's take a closer look and see what they're actually doing here. We all know that the governing body or faithful slave claim to fame is that Jesus came in 1914 and he picked them in 1918 as his organization on earth. The governing body realized that Jesus would never have appointed an unfaithful or indiscreet false teacher or false prophet. Jesus would never appoint them over his earthly interests as it is brought out in Matthew 24. But to get past this, they had to do something with Russell and Rutherford's false teachings. So how is it that they convince people that those men had no false teachings and no false prophecies when in fact they actually had so many of them. Well, what they do is they remove the word false and they refer to them as past truth. Just like in their Proclaimers book, they say that they have never had one false teaching or one false prophecy, which is an outright lie, but if they refer to things as past truths, then they're not lies. At least in their mind, they're not. So instead of being negative, they turn this false teaching into something positive just by referring to them as past truths. And the new truths are evidence that Jehovah is continuing to refine his organization. See, this is one of the main reasons why Jehovah's Witnesses cannot see that it's not God's organization because in their mind they think there's never been a false teaching or a false prophecy so it must be God's organization. In the Jehovah's Witness mind these false lies are actually seen as old light or past truth. The other way they do this is by dropping the word prophecy. They refer to their prophecies as Bible prophecies until they realize that they are wrong, at which point they drop the word prophecy. Dates and events have been presented as Bible prophecies all through Watchtower's history. And this, in fact, is why people believe them because they are supposedly a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. But once those prophecies are discarded, the word prophecy is also discarded. This is very smart on the part of Watchtower, because in truth these are actually Watchtower prophecies, because if they had originated with God, then they would have come true. But they originate with human men because not one of their prophecies have ever come true. In Deuteronomy 18, verse 20 through 22, we see the biblical definition of a false prophet. But the reason Jehovah's Witnesses 
don't notice this is because none of their prophecies have been in the name of Watchtower. But as they say in the June 15th, 1964 Watchtower, Jehovah is the one behind all of it. And this is including their prophecies. So they don't attach any personal responsibility. It all is Jehovah's doing. So when it looks like the Bible is telling Jehovah's Witnesses that they are false prophets, the governing body will not allow for that because these conclusions do not fit into what they want to believe. The governing body will not allow the Bible to warn witnesses that any of them, all the way back to Russell and Rutherford and after that, that any of them are false teachers or false prophets. Notice how they respond to someone who is trying to warn them of this. In the March 15th, 1986 Watchtower, which says, Some opposers claim that Russell and Rutherford were false prophets. These opponents say that dates have been set, but nothing has happened. So the governing body know that these opposers and opponents are correct, that many dates have been set and nothing has happened. So why doesn't this fact make the Jehovah's Witnesses see that Russell and Rutherford were false prophets or false teachers? Well, this goes back to the point of cognitive dissidence or believing what they want to believe because for their whole lives to not be wasted, believing in an illusion that these men are God's organization, with some witnesses, no matter what evidence is shown to them, they cannot allow Russell and Rutherford to be false teachers or false prophets because if Jesus did not pick them, then Jesus did not pick the governing body today. So the governing body cannot allow for that because they'd be out of a job. Notice what the Watchtower says after this. The article goes on to say, Yes, we have had to revive expectations from time to time, but the need to revise our understanding somewhat does not make us false prophets. Such revisions were just for expectations needing some adjustments. So notice how they stay away from saying the word false, but instead they say they revise their understandings or their expectations. Watchtower is very clever with their use of words there. Another thing Watchtower does is when they refer to their own teachings, they refer to them as truth. They also refer to them as rich truth, great truth, Bible truth revealed truth, precious truth, jewels of truth, scriptural truth, established truth and liberating truth, pure language, Bible teachings, Bible prophecies, scriptural beliefs and unfailed prophecies, extraordinary truth, the Creator's promise, the sure words of prophecy, True Teachings of the Bible Revealed Truths of Jehovah Infallible Truths, Christian Truths, and God's Truth They also used to refer to their teachings as Present Truth. And the Jehovah's Witnesses look forward to learning New Truth. And we know that they refer to their beliefs as The Truth. And when their prophecies do not come to pass, or they don't happen, don't take place, as they said they would, notice what they call them. Misplaced zeal, errors, unrealized hopes, previous failures, misplaced optimism, previous errors, misinterpretations, misunderstandings, our understandings, wrong expectations, hopes and expectations, Premature expectations, misplaced expectations, disappointed expectations, errors in their teachings, incomplete concepts, 
inaccurate concepts, serious disappointments, formerly cherished views, mistakes in their understanding, views in need of refinement, an expressed opinion, cherished errors, old truths, past truths, expectations needing adjustments, and matters on which corrections of viewpoint had been needed. So you see what Watchtower is doing when they say something that is false or a false prophecy, they make light of it. And this is, for example, how they got away with the book Millions Now Living Will Never Die. They even show pictures of big billboard posters they made saying Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be resurrected in the year 1925. And then when this didn't happen, the society said, well, this had only been an expressed opinion. Wow. Now you see, their 1925 prophecy was a little more than just an expressed opinion. But in contrast, let's look at when other religions' teachings don't come true. Let's see what the society calls them. Falsehoods. False stories, false teachers, false teachings, false doctrines, false prophets, false prophecy, false religious views, false religious teachings, false religious philosophies, doctrines with pagan roots, God dishonoring doctrines of Babylon the Great, the disfiguring of God, nauseating teachings, God dishonoring teachings, pagan doctrines, godless myths. There is quite a difference there. But yet, Russell and Rutherford both fit the society's own definition of false prophets. If we look at Reasoning from the Scriptures on page 132, they have the definition of what a false prophet is. It states, a false prophet, individuals and organizations that one, proclaim messages that they attribute to a superhuman source, but that two, do not originate with the true God, and three, are not in harmony with his revealed will. Now, Russell and Rutherford did exactly that. They claimed messages and attributed them to Jehovah God, yet they didn't originate with God and were not in harmony with His will as is expressed in the Bible. On page 136 of the reasoning book, they excuse themselves by saying that they do not claim to be inspired prophets. But the problem with that is the Bible doesn't anywhere say it's okay to put Jehovah's name on their teachings and prophecies by calling them the teachings of Jehovah or the Creator's promise, just as long as they do not claim to be inspired. But the Bible doesn't say that's okay. Also, it's very interesting in the reasoning book under false prophets, they go on and on about what a true prophet is, but say very little, if not nothing, about a false prophet, and they don't even mention Deuteronomy 18, 20-22. Despite all the thousands of portions of wrong food at the wrong time that Russell and Rutherford provided through those years down to 1919, the society has never been able to admit that those men were false teachers and or false prophets. And the most fundamental reason why is because they cannot do so and still claim the Watchtower Society is God's organization. So although they have figured out a sneaky way to admit mistakes, they still cannot admit to making false teachings and prophecies. And they will say it doesn't matter what those men were teaching because that is old light and it was 140 years ago. It doesn't matter now. It's not relevant to today's teachings and what's going on today. The Watchtower always states people's motives for doing something. It is interesting to note their warning about false teachers and false prophets. They say that 
These false teachers and false prophets deliberately teach things they know are not true or proclaim things they know are false for the purpose of intentionally misleading others. But how do they view Russell and Rutherford? Well, they were sincere men who never tried to mislead anyone, and those men were just zealous. Sometimes they were overly zealous to see God's will accomplished. Their motives were just so pure. That's what they say on page 714 of the Proclaimer's book. But the Watchtower never accepts that pure motives excuse for anyone other than themselves. They say that sincerity alone is not enough. It's not their motives that label them false, but their teachings and their false prophecies that do. The governing body doesn't deny to be God's prophet, but they do say they are not inspired, and therefore it is okay to put Jehovah's name on their teachings. But according to Deuteronomy 18.20-22, through 22, there are two kinds of prophets. There are true prophets and false prophets. True prophets are inspired, and false prophets are uninspired. But the way the Watchtower spins this, we're not inspired, but we are true prophets. Therefore, they are an uninspired true prophet. And therefore, we have the illusion of a spirit-directed, uninspired true prophet to go along with the illusion that they are God's organization. So Jehovah's Witnesses are unable to see what is being said. But the Bible is very clear in Deuteronomy 18 because it says a false prophet is one who speaks in the name of Jehovah and yet the word doesn't come true. These verses say nothing about being infallible or inspired or uninspired. Another way to recognize a false prophet is seen in Matthew 7, 15-20. It says, Be on the watch for the false prophets who come to you in sheep's covering, but inside they are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. Never do people gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles, do they? Likewise, every good tree produces fine fruit, but every rotten tree produces worthless fruit. A good tree cannot bear worthless fruit, nor can a rotten tree produce fine fruit. Every tree not producing fine fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Really then, by their fruits, you will recognize those men. So Jesus is giving an example here of a tree and that you can tell if this is a rotten tree by the fruit that it produces. Well, the same is with a rotten false prophet tree. The fruit that they will produce will be rotten. The worthless false prophecies that they produce shows you that exactly what kind of prophet they are, true or false. Certainly by going back and taking a look at Watchtower's history and all of the failed prophecies, the many years that they gave for Armageddon, 1914, 1915, 1918, 1925, 1975, and so on, we can see what kind of prophet Watchtower is. And despite all the wording they put on their teachings to make people believe they're not false, a true examination of their prior prophecies show just what Jesus said, a fine tree cannot produce rotten fruit. The watchtower has produced rotten fruit. Thank you for watching.